So in this section we're going to describe what happens when an action potential arrives at a synapse on the end of an axon. We'll have a look at this conceptual diagram. As I described earlier, at the point of contact between the incoming axon from a source neuron and the dendrite or soma of its target neuron, the tip of the axon swells to form the presynaptic bouton. And there's also a swelling of the cell membrane on the target neuron. Now each swelling is fully enclosed in the membrane of its neuron. There's the synaptic cleft separating the membranes of the two neurons, but obviously the diagram isn't to scale. The relative size of the cleft is greatly exaggerated. Now, one common type of synapse is between pyramidal neurons in the cortex, and we'll look at this type of synapse as an example. Action potentials arriving at this type excite the target neuron. In other words, they encourage it to produce its own output action potential. Within the presynaptic bouton are the vesicles containing molecules of neurotransmitter. The type of neurotransmitter is determined by the neuron from which the axon comes. And in the case of pyramidal neurons, the neurotransmitter is glutamate. The vesicles are distributed in the synapse, but some are close to the synaptic cleft, and a few are actually docked on the neuron membrane, right next to the cleft. As we discussed earlier, the concentration of sodium ions inside the neuron is significantly lower than in the external environment, as I've illustrated conceptually by the yellow dots representing sodium ions. In the diagram, green dots represent calcium ions, and the concentration of these ions freely circulating inside the neuron is maintained at an extremely low level. In the postsynaptic density, and that's located on the membrane wall of the postsynaptic neuron next to the postsynaptic cleft, there's large numbers of amper sodium ion channels, and I've just illustrated two and again on a greatly exaggerated scale. These channels are closed unless they're bound by a molecule of the glutamate neurotransmitter, with the binding taking place at a specific site. There's also a large number of voltage-gated calcium ion channels, but in this case they're located in the wall of the presynaptic bouton, and one such calcium channel is illustrated. There's obviously many more Again, that's on a greatly exaggerated scale. Now, because the concentrations of both sodium and calcium ions are greater outside the neuron, if those illustrated channels were open, there'd be a flow of ions into the neurons from the high concentration regions outside towards the low concentration regions inside. When an action potential arrives down the axon uh, to the presynaptic bouton, the voltage-gated calcium channels open, and that allows an influx of calcium ions. These calcium ions, by a sequence of chemical processes, cause vesicles to drift towards the membrane of the presynaptic bouton, and cause some docked vesicles to fuse with the membrane and open towards the cleft. That releases their glutamate neurotransmitter into the cleft. The neurotransmitter molecules diffuse across the cleft and are some attached to binding sites on the amper sodium channels. That causes the amper channels to open. And of course, there'll then be a flow of sodium ions into the target neuron, and that will make the membrane potential a bit less negative. So, this is the description at the level of ion channels that corresponds with the earlier, higher level description of postsynaptic potential injection, with an incoming action potential injecting postsynaptic potential proportional to the weight of the synapse and encouraging an output action potential from the target neuron. So in the next section, we're going to describe how 
postsynaptic potentials from multiple synapses are integrated at the more detailed ion channel level of description.